growing up at Portsmouth Citadel, probably my earliest memory of the Salvation Army is participating in the Nativity, being dressed up in the obligatory tea towel and staff and appearing as a shepherd. I've always loved music, and I suppose growing up in the Salvation Army, that's no surprise. And I do remember the bandmaster of the day, Harold Nobes, brought me my first record, which was Britain's Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. That was a, a lovely gift at the time, and simply fueled my enjoyment of music within the Salvation Army and beyond as well. My uncle had a farm in Shropshire, and every summer I would spend virtually the whole of my school holidays there. And that was a lot of fun. It was great uh, to be in the countryside, and it was good to work with animals. I, I thoroughly enjoyed all of that. And really it was that experience of farm animal work that first gave me a thought and an appetite uh, for becoming a veterinary surgeon. Surgery was usually a resounding success, but I do remember one day when a lady brought a cat in with a broken leg and I repaired the broken leg by putting a pin into the bone. And as I screwed the pin in nice and tight, the leg felt secure, I stitched everything back together I discovered that I'd actually screwed it to the table. All the time that I worked as a veterinary surgeon, I was aware of God's calling on my life to be a Salvation Army officer. I wanted to fulfill an ambition, an ambition to be a vet, which I did, I enjoyed, it was terrific. But all the time I knew that it was temporary, it was not going to be for the long term, and that the long term, was about Salvation Army officership. I'm going to ask Captain Lynette if he'll please stand. Let's welcome him to our pulpit this morning as our special guest.